Today on In Your Face Anatomy, we're talking about epithelial tissues, bitch. All right, tissues. So chapter four, all about the tissues. And before we get into it, we've got to get some of the basics out of the way. So uh, we tissues defined are just layers or groups of cells with a common function. We learned that in chapter one. We're just now doubling back to that to make sure that we get that. Layers or groups of cells with a common function, that is tissue. Now, the study of tissues is actually called histology. Histology is the study of tissues. And we have four primary types of tissues that we have to cover. So we've got epithelial tissues is what we're going to talk about today. I've got connective tissues, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. So all four of those are our four uh, types of tissues, our primary tissue types that we want to be familiar with. So all of this is fair game for the test and or practical exam. So make sure that we're up on this stuff here. All right. Intercellular junctions. So we just said that tissues form when groups or layers of cells come together and converge. That happens through the action of intercellular junctions. So we have three basic intercellular junctions to distinguish today. I've got the tight junctions. This is where uh, membranes of adjacent cells come together and they fuse together. So those membranes just kind of glue themselves together, take the two cells and gluing them together. And typically this is going to form sheet-like layers. So that's what we want to really associate with tight junction is it forms sheet-like layers. That's really the key concept there. Then we have desmosomes. So with desmosomes, we form rivets or spot welds uh, in between cells to form this tissue. And this makes a reinforced structure. It gives the structure some strength. So if I draw in a little tissue over here and then another tissue or another cell next to it, if I was to slap in some desmosomes here, it would just kind of look something like this. Boom, where we're coming in and we're making it just extra strong at that particular part. And then lastly, we have gap junctions. So with our gap junctions, tubular channels between cells, what we really want to know about gap junctions is that we primarily uh, find that in cardiac tissue. So that's the association we want to make with uh, gap junctions is cardiac tissue. And so that's my basic intercellular junctions, how these cells are coming together and converging, fusing to form these layers of tissues. So our first tissue type that we have to get into today is epithelial tissues. So with our epithelial tissues, these uh, cover an organ and they also cover our body. One of the key things that really makes epithelial tissues distinct is that they always have a free surface. That is huge. Always have a free surface. If we see that free surface, then we're going to know that we're talking about epithelial tissues in particular. So that free surface could be like the outer layer of skin here. The free surface is the outside world, or it could be the space inside of a tubular structure. So that would be my free space in the middle there. They, but they always have a free space with epithelial tissue. You got to know that. My epithelial tissue is also avascular, meaning I don't have any blood vessels in it. It's completely dependent on the tissue beneath it to feed it, to take away its waste products, to bring it nutrients and oxygen, get rid of the carbon dioxide, completely dependent on the tissue underneath it. With my epithelial tissues, my cells also divide super fast, so injuries heal really quickly. And my epithelial uh, tissue extends all the way down to the basement membrane. So what we want to know about the basement membrane is this is a thin, non-living layer that anchors the epithelium to the connective tissue underneath. And so think of the basement membrane as like a piece of double-sided tape. On one side, I've got my epithelial tissue. On the other side, I've got my connective tissue. And it's the basement membrane that is anchoring that together. So my basement membrane with my epithelial tissue, the tissue extends all the way down to the basement membrane, to the basement membrane. Then we jump into connective tissue underneath that. All right, so before we get into the actual individual epithelial tissues, we've got some terminology that we need to learn. So this is gold for this chapter. So important. It makes your life so much easier if you can learn these five words all having to do with epithelial tissues. you got to know these five words. It makes just everything easier. Five words. That's it. Five words. So first, 
squamous. So a squamous, what I want you to think is squashed, squamous, squashed, or flattened. This is thin, flat cells. And so we're going to see them kind of drawn out like so, thin and flat. Short little flat cells, that is squamous. Next up, we've got cuboidal. So cuboidal cells are cube-shaped. Cuboidal, cube-shaped, or square is what they're really saying. Cube-shaped or square kind of cells with cuboidal tissue. And then lastly is columnar. So columnar, we are talking uh, tall or elongated cells. So we go up high. This would be an example of columnar epithelium. So I've got squamous, I've got cuboidal, I've got columnar. Then we look at the layers of cells. So if we use the word simple, simple just means one. One layer of cells is simple. Two or more layers we call stratified. So we simple, one, anything other than one is stratified. So then we start interchanging these words together, and that's how it makes sense. So the first one we're going to look at is simple squamous, which automatically tells me just from its name alone, simple squamous, that this is going to be one layer of thin, flat cells. You start putting those pieces together using this terminology, it makes your life so much easier. So without any further ado, let's jump into our first epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue number one, simple squamous epithelium. Like we just said, this is one layer of thin, flat cells. And we know that just from our terminology. Simple tells me one layer. Squamous tells me thin, flat cells. So we have this layer of thin, flat, uh, flat cells. So substances can pass through easily. So we find these guys lining our air sacs and also some of our blood vessels. Air sacs especially, it's important because we can move oxygen in and out of the cell, carbon dioxide in and out of the cell for gas exchange with our red blood cells as circulation occurs throughout our lungs. So they resemble uh, floor tiles and we have this broad, flat nucleus. And so we can kind of see it in this picture here. Let me slide this up. Boom. So... Here, are, uh, here is a layer of simple squamous epithelium. I've got these thin, flattened cells come down to the basement membrane on the bottom. This flat part in the middle, that is going to be my nucleus. And this is a good telltale sign for simple squamous, um, especially looking at it from the side view, which is what we're doing. Um, this broad, flat nucleus is a dead giveaway. Broad, flat nucleus, simple squamous epithelium. So all of this is good stuff. We've got to know it's one layer of thin, flat cells. We've got to know that uh, it resembles floor tiles. We've got to know this broad, flat nucleus. And we want to know that we find it lining the air sacs uh, and the blood vessels. So our next tissue type when it comes to epithelial tissues is simple cuboidal. Simple cuboidal epithelium. So the name tells me this is one layer of cube-shaped or square cells. Now, cuboidal is a little different. Um, so any cuboidal tissue that I've got, whether I'm talking simple or stratified, it's typically going to surround a lumen. So anytime I see a lumen, I immediately check kind of the perimeter of that to see if there is cuboidal tissue around that lumen. Then I look for how many layers of cuboidal tissue before I make my determination. So a lumen is just an, an opening uh, inside of a tubular structure, the space inside of a tubular structure. Like when you drive through a tunnel, your car drives through the lumen of that tunnel. It's the opening inside. So it's going to be around that opening is where we're going to find our cuboidal tissue. The other thing that stands out with cuboidal tissue is that it has a centrally located spherical nuclei. So that is one easy way to distinguish uh, cuboidal tissue, uh, specifically central cuboidal, a simple cuboidal, the centrally located spherical nuclei. So we got a picture of it here. Move the camera a little bit. There we go. So here's my lumen in the middle. So all of this is my lumen, the opening inside of a tubular structure. So we can say this could be part of a blood vessel, or it could be your intestines, or, or anything along that line. Anything that's got that opening space, we come around that, and I can see one layer of these cube-shaped cells all the way around. That's why I know this is simple cuboidal, but I, I can also look and see right in the middle, I've got this nice round nucleus, centrally located spherical nuclei, which means, just means a round nucleus in the middle of the cell. 
Easy one to spot. Simple cuboidal. All right, our next epithelial tissue is simple columnar. So as the name will suggest, this is one layer of tall or elongated cells. Now, simple columnar is an important one, and it's one that's a little bit trickier to draw, but it's not terrible. So we find our nuclei close to the basement membrane at about the same level. There's a little bit of variance there, but they're all going to be at about the same level. Uh, and that's uh, the real key to being able to identify simple columnar is noticing, hey, all those nuclei are, are at that same level. We get goblet cells. So this is the first time we've seen goblet cells. Goblet cells always do the same thing. They secrete mucus. And sometimes it's a protective mucus. Sometimes it's more of a functional mucus. But they always secrete mucus. So our simple columnar, we're going to find in the stomach, the uterines, and the intestines. So all of these are really acidic or really basic environments. Um, but we use the uh, simple columnar specifically because it is elongated, because it is tall, it gives us that extra layer of protection between the stomach acids and the underlying tissue beneath the simple columnar. So we elongate it to make it a little bit more protective. Then on top of that, we secrete that mucus from our goblet cells on top of my simple columnar, and that makes it even more protection. So we got acidic environments in the stomach and in the uterus, it's a little acidic uh, at the entrance of the intestines, but then it quickly turns basic. But another key thing, another important thing about this tissue, it can specialize for absorption, which is where the intestines comes in. It can specialize for absorption and start grabbing all of those nutrients. And we also find microvilli. So microvilli are very similar to cilia. So cilia we used in the cell for uh, a projectile for moving things around or moving substances. Uh, microvilli, we're going to drag our microvilli through the, the uh, food that we eat, for instance, and we're going to use that to help absorb those nutrients. So when we draw simple columnar, we want something along this line, um, or being able to identify it to understand these concepts at least. Now I've got my uh, one row of tall elongated cells. In the middle here, I've got my goblet cell. And it's going to be secreting its mucus, which is going to kind of just come in and fill up these top cracks here in between the cells just to give us that extra layer of protection. I've got my microvilli. So as food gets pushed along here, say, well, in the intestines, it's going to get dragged um, across those microvilli. And they're going to start absorbing those nutrients. But the biggest thing here is that all of my nuclei are at about the same level all the way around. They're not exactly at the same level, but they're close. They're at about that same level. And that's really the telltale sign for simple columnar, one layer of elongated cells. All right, next up, we got pseudo stratified columnar epithelia. Pseudo stratified columnar epithelia. So, pseudo means fake or false. Stratified, we know from our terminology uh, slide just a couple uh, pictures ago, was. Um, Many or two or more layers. So multiple layers is what stratified means. Simple as one layer, stratified is multiple layers. So fake multiple layer columnar epithelia is what pseudo stratified means, which is telling us that we got our nuclei at uh, several layers. We don't have a, 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 a uniform placement for our nuclei with pseudo stratified. So when we look at it through the microscope and we're peering in there, it looks like it's lots of layers because we see all of these nuclei kind of stacked on top of each other. So it looks like lo lots of layers, but it's really just one. One layer of cells whose nuclei don't have a distinct position, giving that appearance of multiple layers, hence the name pseudostratified. So it looks like it's a bunch of layers, but it's really just one. We find these guys on the respiratory passageways, and all of our cells with pseudostratified reach the basement membrane. So this is a pretty easy one to spot right out of the gate. We have goblet cells again. This time I drew my goblet cell in pink because that's the marker that was close by. But I can see all my cells, they all come down to the basement membrane down here. So we'll, this here's my basement membrane at the bottom. They all come down to the basement membrane and then they start reaching up towards the free surface. So this is my free surface up here. Because remember all of our epithelial tissue have a free surface or the inside of a lumen. We still got microvilli or cilia, just depending on the type of cell that we're dealing with here. And I can see all of my nuclei just kind of randomly all over the place, lots of different levels. That's how we know 
This is pseudo stratified. Nuclei just kind of everywhere. Pseudo stratified. All right, so our next tissue then is uh, stratified squamous. So this is an important one. I'm going to put a big star up here next to it um, because we want to come back. I'm going to do the star in pink too because it's that important. That's right. I pulled out the pink marker. This is a really important epithelial tissue for us because in our next chapter is the skin. We actually get into our first organ. We're done with the prereq stuff at that point, and we get into the skin. And our skin is uh, stratified squamous. So we can see it right here, the outer layer of skin. So we're going to come back and talk about this uh, type of tissue in more detail in the very next chapter. So stay on top of it. The many layers of cells with the top being flat. More on that in a minute. Like I said, it's the outer layer of skin. As cells divide, older cells get pushed closer towards that free surface. And then they slowly collapse as they get closer and closer to it. Uh, to the free surface itself under the increased pressure. The closer we get to that free surface, the more pressure these cells are under, and we can see that um, and, and how they collapse. Now, during this process of collapsing, they start to accumulate the protein keratin, and the more keratin that they accumulate, eventually we can go through keratinization. So uh, the cells harden and die, and they leave us with this uh, dry, tough, protective material that is our skin. All right, so for my... Um, Stratified squamous, probably the most important tissue to know right now. Down here is my connective tissue, we'll say. So we'll, we'll make this my basement membrane down here and connective tissue, et cetera. This is not really important. What is important is these cells along the bottom of my stratified squamous. What they're going to do is they're going to go through mitosis and they're going to divide. And when they divide, they have to push their cells up because there's nowhere to go. They can't go down because there's the basement membrane. That's where my epithelial tissue stops. So they got to get pushed up. And as they get pushed closer and closer to the free space, which we have up here, the pressure starts to increase as the cells behind them are also getting pushed forward now as these cells undergo uh, mitosis at the bottom. So uh, by the time they get to the top, these are just thin, dead cells that have been keratinized, and that's what makes up our skin. So when we're looking for this, what we're looking for is right next to the free space, I have these thin little flat dead cells. Thin little flat cells is what we got. And as I move away, as I start to move further and further down, these the little row of cells, they get a little bigger. So I start flat, the cells under that are a little bigger, and then a little bigger, and a little bigger, and a little bigger, and a little bigger. As we move away from this free surface and get back to our normal size cells uh, down here, undergoing mitosis, doing all sorts of little cell things. So that is stratified squamous. Make sure you know everything about this. Everything I've listed here, I'd look at the PowerPoint again just to be safe. All right, next up we've got stratified cuboidal. So stratified cuboidal tells us multiple layers of cube-shaped cells or square cells. So two to three layers of cube-shaped cells. With uh, stratified cuboidal, I want you to think glands, glandular tissue. We've got our, our mammary glands, sweat glands, excuse me, salivary glands, the pancreas, which is also a gland. All of that is glandular epithelium. So think stratified cuboidal glands. When we draw it, we've still got our lumen like we had with simple cuboidal. So we see that lumen, we're thinking, oh, this is probably cuboidal. Then we check the uh, surrounding layers to see. I've got more than one layer of cells, so that's why I know this is stratified cuboidal. If it's just one layer of cells, it's simple cuboidal. But two layers of cube-shaped cells, stratified cuboidal, that's an easy one. Then I've got stratified columnar. So stratified columnar is a little bit different than everything we've done so far because the name is going to make you think this is multiple layers of tall or elongated cells. And that's just not the case. With stratified columnar, what we've got is the outermost layer of cells is columnar, but the inner layer underneath that is going to be cuboidal tissue. So we end up with cuboidal and columnar together in stratified columnar. So we find this in parts of the malurethra and in parts of the pharynx. So when we draw it, what we're really looking for is this inner layer. I've drawn this one small, scaled down just to make it fit. Um, so these are all my cube-shaped cells here. And then my elongated or tall cells on the outside of that stratified 
Kalomnar. All right, transitional epithelium. So transitional epithelium is a pretty easy one. Uh, it gets its name because it is specialized to change under increased tension. Specialized to change under increased tension, which means it can stretch. We find this tissue specifically in the bladder. And with our transitional, what we're seeing here is as the bladder fills up, we need that tissue to be able to accommodate the fluid as it gets stored in the bladder and then retract back down to its normal size when we empty our bladder. So underneath our transitional, we've got connective tissue. What I really want to show is just how the transitional tissue kind of all pieces together. We've got a nice bold nucleus in there, makes it easy to spot. And all of this out here, let me get a different color so it's not all pink. All of this out here then is my free space. My free space all the way around. So we can kind of see how my transitional tissue pokes up into the free space. Super easy one. Transitional, bladder, it's stretchy. And then the last thing for epithelial tissues is our endocrine versus exocrine. So we gotta make that distinction first. Um, so with an endocrine, when we say endocrine, what we're meaning is internal secretion is what that means. When we secrete something, typically it's our hormones with our endocrine system. We're going to secrete stuff right into our bloodstream. It's going to stay in our system. With our exocrine glands, we are secreting stuff to the outside world. So that's going to be like your sweat glands or your mammary glands, your earwax glands. Anything that goes to the outside world is classified as exocrine. So we've got a couple different ways with our epithelial tissue specifically that we can look at some of this glandular epithelium. So I've got three ways, and it's all about how they secrete their product. So the first one is called a merocrine gland, and they release their product by exocytosis. I've got apocrine, who release small pieces of their cell body, and then I have holocrine, which release entire cells. So let me turn it. There we go. Okay. So with my merocrine, we say we release their products by exocytosis. This is uh, my, la uh, my layer of cells here with my glands, and they're just going to secrete their product right out. It comes right out. Boop, boop, doop, doop, doop. And it's just the product being released by exocytosis. We're familiar with exocytosis and how that works. Apocrine gland, what we will end up doing is filling up a corner or a piece of the cell. And when that part is full with whatever it is we are secreting, we will just release that entire chunk of cell. So apocrine, losing parts of the cell that are filled up with our product. Holocrine, they release entire cells. And so we can see that here. We filled up uh, this tissue has picked this one cell and filled it up completely with its product. And then it releases the entire cell. I just remember that one pretty easy. Holocrine releases whole cells is how I remember that. Then it's just a toss up between merocrine and apocrine. Holocrine releases whole cells or entire cells. So that is epithelial tissues. We've got two connective tissues coming up. So stick around. Good luck with that.